the first generation ever to face the dichotomy of food excess and hunger at the same time. Here's a really hard fact to accept. The world actually produces enough food to feed and nourish the entire population. However, approximately 800 million people in the world go to bed hungry. The conditioning around food waste is something we really need to address. When we think about sustainability, especially in terms with food, we automatically think about how boring and tasteless the dish is going to be. We tend to have a set of preconceived notions about vegan restaurants and organic food. A majority perceive it as an outlet for experimentation and would mostly go in for an appetizer and never for a main course. All because sustainably produced food has a really, really bad PR. I have personally had diners dismiss a dish on my menu called the pumpkin coconut dip as just a mere kaddu and then relish every bite of it towards the end. Foods perceived as boring have it in them to really stand out. Taste need not ever be compromised whilst preparing a sustainable and nutritious meal and in fact it should stand out. Did you know that almost 33% of household waste is edible and wasted food often ends up in landfills? gradually breaking down to form methane, a greenhouse gas that's up to 86 times more harmful than carbon dioxide. If food waste were to be a country, it would be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases right after China and the United States. There is a huge gap of knowledge in what is edible and what is not. Fun fact, even the peels or the bananas you had this morning are edible. Banana peels are full of nutrients and can be easily used baked and fried and actually tastes quite a bit like meat it's not just edible it's delicious in my restaurant we make banana skin bacon and banana skin tacos another example of uh, of eating root to shoot is pumpkin more often than not only the flesh of a pumpkin is used and the rest of it discarded However, every part ranging from the flower, leaves, seeds, skin and of course its flesh are edible and super nutritious. What's more, pumpkin are rich in vitamin A and C, high in antioxidants, boost immunity and are great for vision. Even so, here's a reality check. 1.3 billion pounds of pumpkins are trashed in October alone. If there's a time to stop food waste, it's now. When I started Ivy and Bean, I realized the diverse constraints that come into attempting a zero food waste restaurant. It's not just entrees and appetizers that need to be redefined. Being mindful of every step from procurement and making the produce is a challenge. Restaurants and the food industry in general are pretty much supposed to be the most wasteful industries in the world. As per a study published by Ma Michael Pollan at UC Berkeley, for every calorie of food that we consume today, 10 calories of fossil fuel energy are taken to produce it. That's a whole lot. Think about it. That's when Fig and Maple came in. This venture addressed the obstacle of making food waste work for me. We source all of our produce from small scale farmers in chemical free farming, restoring our inventories within 10 days. For a few initial months, I made it a practice to weigh our food waste dustbin every night. Going through the contents of the dustbin, we were able to experiment with what we wanted to serve. This was because we were able to get fair estimates of items causing significant amount of food waste in its prep. And we also started understanding our clients' likes and dislikes. Till date, we follow the routine of dustbin diving and it has given us a space to constantly adapt and explore dishes, mix and match flavors and understand our consumer base. It's, it also has led us to deep dive into research on what's edible and what's not. There are different types of waste. There's a waste of time, there's a waste of space, there's a waste of energy and then there's a waste of waste. Every business I've been working on over the past five years has been an endeavor to reduce these types of waste. The dishes we create need to be marketed well in order to change other people's minds about these unconventional ingredients. For example, there's a dish on my menu called skinny chipping. Here it is. A dish made with vegetable peels and cauliflower stock. Now imagine if I named it garbage chips. How many people would have bothered trying it? Additionally, rather than us putting a dish down, our customers are allowed to help themselves to as much or as little as they want. 
but this story is not about eliminating food waste it's about minimizing it so in our kitchen we put the waste we can't do anything about into what we can do best that is compost it's not just step by step utilization of our produce that we are falling short of but also the ability to preserve food which when not done can cause the most serious amount of wastage in most supermarkets around the world food waste has not been tackled the chunks of food simply being trashed due to the lack of presentability or the lack of the ability to make a profit over them we ourselves constantly make choices that compromise quantity over quality when we go to the vegetable market we argue our way through getting a few stems of free dhania only for it to wilt in the bottom drawer of our refrigerator we need to learn to buy what we need and then preserve it well food can be preserved by making use of straining filtration pickling etc which are all conducive methods in our kitchen at figan maple we also make use of lacto fermentation and pickling the oldest form of food preservation the oldest form of food preservation in the world only involving salt salt water brine creates an oxygen free environment where only lactobacillus bacteria can survive this lactobacillus acts as a preservative preventing other harmful bacteria from living in the ferment food waste was never a problem for india we are the land of preservation fermentation and using root to shoot shelling peas sitting on a charpai in afternoons or making use of leftover rice by cooking kanji or poita bath our ancestors already knew how to minimize food waste somehow due to urbanization and busy lifestyles we've lost the connection we had with food we need to learn from our ancestors and smaller communities to try and find a balance between the new and the old our very small conscious and responsible choices can cause endless ripples in reaching zero food waste i'm summing up a few basic tips that everyone here can incorporate even if they don't cook learn what's edible and what's not papaya seeds can be used in place of pepper only fruits of nightshade plants like aubergine and tomatoes are edible the leaves are toxic and unfit for consumption fifo first in first out learn the art of rotation use what you bought earlier before you move on to what you bought later it's something we practice in the restaurant regularly learn to use best before dates as guidelines and not as directives use your senses to know what's off what's not Ugly food tastes delicious. Be that person who picks the wonkiest looking carrot over the most perfect looking one. Millions of tons of food is wasted due to cosmetic reasons. Niche practices require flavorful marketing. Do not market your food habits explicitly under sustainability or it being multicultural. Always emphasize on taste and flavor. Make it a habit to store the correct vegetables in the correct places, like the bottom drawer of your refrigerator. This helps a lot in increasing the shelf life of fresh produce. Never go out grocery shopping on an empty stomach. Carry a list of items you really need and make a meal plan for the entire week. Connect with your food. Know where it's coming from, take some time to cook it, learn how to use it and preserve all of it. Ask yourself, can you freeze it, pickle it, puree it, ziplock it and use it in different ways. Coming back to pumpkins, you can puree pumpkin and keep it in the freezer for up to 3 months and make a pumpkin edisiri after so nature does not really create waste as such everything in nature is used as a closed continuous cycle with waste being the end of the beginning and that's something that's been nurturing all of us this whole time reducing food waste and becoming environmentally conscious is hard but i wanted to get up and show you that we can do it if we are slightly more responsible sustainable businesses and are doable and they're profitable and it's time we got around to creating more of them especially in the food industry thank you